Um, Scott, speaking of insults, there was a pretty clear one today that came out of Detroit. Donald Trump was there speaking in Detroit, and this is what he had to say about Detroit. The whole country is going to be like, you want to know the truth? It'll be like Detroit. Our whole country will end up being like Detroit if she's your president. You're going to have a mess on your hands. She destroyed San Francisco. She destroyed, along with Newscom, California. And uh, we're not going to let her do that to this country. We're not going to let it happen. I mean, it literally says Detroit Economic Club on the lectern that he's speaking in front of. But, but Scott, in the bigger point, one, I can't imagine if Harris said that in Wisconsin, rural Wisconsin, was that critical that it would just kind of pass by. But, but Michigan, obviously, is a state that Trump needs. He won it in 2016, lost it in 2020. He could be getting votes in the area that he's criticizing. Yeah, it, it is a constant Republican refrain for many years that these large American cities that have decades of history of electing Democrats and that then have poor economic outcomes or poor crime outcomes or poor education outcomes. It's because of the local leadership. And so I think the point he was making is maybe we could do something different than just keep electing the same Democrats who've hurt these cities. Donald Trump said, wanted to say Detroit equals black. That was a code word that he just did. And I would say if you go to the city of Detroit, the revitalization of downtown Detroit, Detroit has been pretty substantial. Is it all the way back to where it was when it was booming? No, but the investment in local Detroit is real. And he, you just said insulting the people you want to have vote. I think that's an insult from the own candidate. Yeah, I mean, I looked into the numbers. The homicide rate's actually gone down there in the last year. They are making improvements, but, but uh, regardless. I- all right, guys. So like I've been telling you, the closer that we get to the election, the more desperate Democrats in the mainstream liberal media will get with their attacks against trump okay they're gonna just make things up they're gonna do what i like to call ass pulls as in they're going to pull things out of their ass okay and it's gonna be a load of crap that's gonna come out and they're gonna try to sell that to the american people right that is essentially what is happening here with this story we got to talk about involving trump giving a speech in detroit at the economic club event detroit happens to be a mainly black city i mean the city is almost 88 percent black right and trump tells the truth about detroit which is that detroit is not in great shape right now as you can tell by the headline detroit ranked second least safe city in the united states detroit landed near the bottom of the list due to high crime rates employment and more again this is a very common story when it comes to these democrat run liberal cities that vote blue no matter who right common story you can say the same thing about chicago san francisco new york washington dc boston portland seattle la you name it right you you can say this about a lot of these democrat run cities okay and trump has said similar comments about democrat run cities it just so happens that again because detroit is basically almost 80 percent black the media is boohoo whining, and crying racism, right? It is totally fake outrage, right? But again, it's coordinated. They're all saying the same things, the same talking points, because that's how the liberal media and the Democrat Party roll, okay? I mean, they're essentially working together in collusion to try to stop Trump from winning the election, okay? So Trump basically said that if Kamala Harris wins the election, the rest of the country is going to look like Detroit. And the mainstream liberal media, including Leonard McKelvey, aka Charlemagne the Devil, are going to boohoo the white gray racism. Trump is saying that Kamala Harris is going to make the country blacker if she wins. This is white supremacy. It's dog whistle. Right? This, this is what they're all saying in the media. This is comedy. Hey, take a look. And we are a developing nation. Well, we're a developing nation too. Just take a look at Detroit. Detroit's a developing, Detroit's a developing area, hell of a lot more than most places in China. The whole country is going to be like, you want to know the truth? It'll be like Detroit. Our whole country will end up being like Detroit if she's your president. All right, joining us right now is the Democratic governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. Governor, thank you for coming on. You had choice words for Donald Trump after he trashed Detroit while in Detroit. He's he, the thing that I wonder today is why do you think he said it? <laughs> I 
don't know because he doesn't know what the heck he's talking about on this issue or on many others, Kate. You don't come into Detroit and speak to the Detroit Economic Club and then denigrate the city of Detroit. It shows he's totally out of touch. Detroit's population is growing for the first time in decades. We hosted the biggest, best NFL draft the country's ever seen. The Lions and the Tigers are, are kicking, you know, behind and <laughs> we are seeing a resurgence in manufacturing thanks to the biden harris administration so there's so much good stuff going on in detroit and so for donald trump to come in and crap all over the city shows he's out of touch he's dangerous and he's full of it you know what he's doing he's getting through the moment as an aging artist okay He's just getting through the moment and insulting Detroit to its face. And you're right, Simone. Uh -huh. There is racism in there. Oh, yeah. There's always a tinge of racism in everything he says. Oh, he thought he thought he was thinking of white the people white and they didn't live in Detroit. People. So he who, thought he could trash. Yeah, That's you know, my estimation. Yeah, it's a developing nation. He thought he nation. could trash. Oh, yeah. yeah let me I, trash Detroit because y'all must live in Let me tell you something. There's something wrong with people who can watch that and think the alternative, Kamala Harris, mm isn't more articulate, more prepared, more experienced, more able to, and when I say articulate, that means actually deliver a message to the American people on a certain policy, you know she can. If you can't believe it and this is your choice, you're lying to yourself and you're gonna ruin this country. That's your, it's gonna be on you. It's going to be on you because there's no way you can watch that or any of his speeches and get anything out of it except for a hateful, racist, bigoted, tired, aging, branding, I wouldn't say genius, branding obsessed narcissist. Detroit, what up, though? Uh, if America turns into D Detroit, that would be great. I mean, that means we'd have soul resilience, something Donald Trump could never understand. So keep Detroit out your mouth. And you better believe Detroiters won't forget this in November. Um, that's right. You got to come to the defense of your city. I don't understand why Trump would come to Michigan and insult the biggest city in Michigan. But I'm going to tell you right now, when I say I don't understand, like Trump, I'm basically a truthful person. Actually, I'm lying because I know exactly why he has no problem insulting Detroit because Donald Trump knows that a lot of his supporters simply don't care about black people. Let's be clear about it. Vice President Kamala Harris is a woman of color, black and Indian. When Trump says the whole country is gonna be like Detroit if she becomes president, he's telling folks that they need to fear America becoming too black. Not only will you have a black woman president, but Detroit used to be the blackest city in America. I believe it still is. If not, it's still very, 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 very black. I did some research, and by research, I mean I asked ChatGPT, and it said 78% of its population uh, identifies as black, 78%. Okay, so Trump was telling all those folks there, if Vice President Kamala Harris becomes president, America will be very black. We got to stop calling these things racist dog whistles. Okay, these are white supremacist bullhorns at this point. If you don't see the play by now, then you don't want to see it. Okay, nobody plays in the white racial grievances like Donald Trump. Saying America is going to be like Detroit if Kamala Harris wins is just coded language that attracts racists. So please let Kathy Griffin give Donald Trump the biggest hee-haw. Please give this giant jar of mayo the biggest hee-haw. Uh -huh. uh -huh. mm. Yeah, so you see now you heard that. Now, again, this is so funny to me because I know for a fact all of these people are coping. They all know that what Trump is saying is 100% true in regards to how bad Detroit is. But they want to pretend like Detroit is so great simply because... It's a majority black city. Instead of telling the truth about Detroit, which is basically the truth when it comes to most of these majority black cities, which is that they're not great cities, okay? I mean, they're just not, okay? They're not doing well. That's just the truth. But people hate telling the truth about places that are mostly black, which is that they're not great, okay? That's just the reality of the situation, okay? I know it don't sound good, right? It, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts the feelings, right? But hey, <laughs> the truth hurts, okay? I'm sorry. But just because the truth hurts doesn't mean that you shouldn't tell the truth. And this is what really annoys me about white liberals, okay? Because people like Mika Brzezinski, who is a white liberal woman, uh, she would never be caught anywhere near Detroit without massive security, right? Like, she would never visit Detroit 
as a city that she would just visit just to be visiting, right? <laughs> Some type of vacation spot. She wouldn't do it. She, she would never do it, right? She would never live in Detroit. She would never spend an extended amount of time in Detroit. More than she has to for some type of business trip. And I guarantee you, if she's there, she's going to have a ton of security, okay? And she will not leave her hotel without her security. She is not going to be in Detroit unless she has some business purpose of being there, okay? Uh, she's not going there for vacation. And we all know why, right? It's the same reason why a lot of people... Uh, you know, choose to skip over these types of cities, right? Like me personally, there's just a list of cities that I have on my radar that I, I just, I'm just like, nah, I'm just not going, right? Oakland, Memphis. Now, Detroit is not on that list, but I'm just not compelled to go to Detroit, right? I just don't feel like there's any reason for me to go, right? Like, I just don't want to go, okay? It's just not a place where I'm like, oh yeah, I really want to go. I'm just like, hey, you know, I, I, I'm good not going to Detroit. I don't think I'm really missing out on anything. Okay, maybe I'm missing out on some like the auto stuff, right? The car stuff. I, I, I think that's probably some of the stuff that would be fascinating. Uh, but outside of that, you know, I'm not interested. Okay, but again, my, my point about white liberals and why they annoy me is that they do all this fake virtue signaling when they know they would never live in a city like Detroit, right? Or vacation in a city like Detroit. I'll never forget this story that uh, this white guy from Boston told me when I was at a wedding in charleston south carolina which by the way charleston south carolina that is a city that i highly recommend despite being a plantation town a slave town right black people supposed to be scared right no no it's an amazing town highly recommended uh beautiful beautiful place amazing food amazing people great place to visit right um but when i was there this white guy from boston was telling me about the white liberals in boston and how they do all this virtue signaling right like for example claiming how they support black people so much and black lives matter and how they support uh, affordable housing, right? But yet these liberals will put up these signs claiming that they support these initiatives in name only, right? But when it comes time to actually support the legislation, they will put up signs telling people to vote against the actual legislation, right? The, the actual technical name of the bill, because we all know that the actual like title of the bill uh that they vote on is different than the marketing name right so they'll give it some marketing name that you know people use in order to uh spread awareness about the bill right but the actual name of the bill is different right it's more technical so that's the trick that they'll 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 pull because they didn't want the so-called black and brown people to be able to afford housing in their neighborhood right so they would vote against they would tell people to vote against the legislation to allow the low income housing to be built in their neighborhoods uh while at the same time claiming to support the marketing name of the bill but they don't actually really support the real legislation right again that's the type of trick they'll pull okay it reminds me of the illegal immigrants that got bust to martha's vineyard right all these white liberals claim that, oh yeah we support illegals we love migrants right except when the migrants are in their city right in their town when it comes time for them to take care of the illegals <laughs> you, you guys all saw how fast the white liberals got rid of the illegals right <laughs> i think it was less than 48 hours might have been less than 24 hours they was out of there right quickly quick fast in a hurry it was like no 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 okay the illegals uh they belong in the so-called black and brown neighborhoods right that's how they operate and this is why they annoy me so much with this fake virtue signaling because they all know uh, that Detroit is, is not a great city, right? Like, I mean, look at these statistics, okay? Detroit uh, ranked uh, as the second least safe city in the United States, just ahead of Memphis, which is not really saying much. Memphis is one of the most dangerous cities, not just in the country, but on the planet, right? That's not an exaggeration, okay? One of the most dangerous cities on the planet. So we know that Detroit, again, is not a very safe place. And their crime rates across the board, yes, they have improved according to the government statistics, if you want to believe them, right? Detroit has made some progress, but still, their levels of crime are above the national average. And, you know, it's not something that I would brag about, right? I mean, these people brag about, oh, okay, we saw a drop in 2023. This is what they claim was like, okay, it's still well above the national average right 
it's still not good right it's not great oh you made some progress okay well make progress for the next 10 years straight and then i'll think about visiting right then i'll think about pulling up to detroit and checking it out right i'm just saying i'm just saying um trump didn't say anything wrong he didn't say anything racist he didn't mention black people at all he didn't even mention race but somehow these people extrapolated that well trump must be talking about blacks right which it tells you everything you need to know about who actually are the people that think that black people committing all the crimes right that black people or black cities are inherently bad right it's, it's actually these people because trump said nothing nothing about detroit that he hasn't said about oakland or san francisco or uh a lot of these liberal cities across the country right Trump has said very similar things about a lot of liberal cities, multiple liberal cities, not just Detroit, but for whatever reason, they want to boohoo, whine, and cry racism. Now, when Trump says something about San Francisco, do they cry racism? No, they don't, right? They don't. But when it's Detroit, oh, it's racist. Again, these people make me sick. They make me sick. But, you know, it's stuff like this. I, 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 I find stories like this to be a good sign right when they're this desperate when they're reaching this hard it's like yeah this is desperation right you have nothing this is not going to sway anybody nobody in michigan is going to listen to what trump is saying and say oh i'm not going to vote for trump because he is trashing detroit right when probably a lot of people that are living there probably be trashing detroit as well too they probably feel the exact same way that's the crazy part they probably feel the exact same way but again, there's all these people, none of whom live in Detroit, <laughs> that are caping for Detroit, coming to Detroit's defense. Oh, Detroit is not that bad, right? But they would never live in Detroit. They never live in Detroit. Again, it's just so funny how that works. Um, so, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black and perspective. Peace. Online game.